princess and the dragon the kingdom of shivale was ruled by a brave king hari sen the king and queen were sad as they had no children they always used to pray to god with the grace of god on one auspicious day the queen gave birth to a beautiful daughter they named her veera all the people of the kingdom were happy on the birth of their princess as princess veera was growing up along with reading and writing the king also taught her sword fighting horse riding spear fighting and many other skills very soon princess veera turned into a great warrior everyone in the kingdom lived in peace and harmony one day a minister got the news that the neighboring king was planning to attack their kingdom due to his old age the king was not in a position to lead his army in a war he asked princess veera to take his place when the neighboring king attacked their kingdom brave princess veera fiercely led her troops they fought with the enemy and won the battle entire kingdom was celebrating their victory but the neighboring king was upset as he had lost a battle against a princess he was fully aware that it was not possible to fight and win against the brave princess and her army so he decided to take help from his brother ketu ketu was an evil and wicked magician the wicked brothers made a plan that ketu would enter king hari sen's palace quietly and capture the king and queen then they would ask the princess to surrender the kingdom to them as per their plan one night the wicked magician ketu became invisible with his powers he entered king hari sen's palace and captured the old king and the queen he tied them and kept them in the king's chambers princess veera and the soldiers tried to free the king and the queen but they could not because of ketu's magical powers ketu asked veera to surrender the kingdom to his brother now the brave princess was helpless she was worried about her parents she called an emergency meeting with her ministers they discussed about how they can save her parents from the wicked magician one old minister said you can get help from the magical dragon who lived across the mountains princess veera immediately started her journey After traveling on her horse for a long time she reached the mountain where the magical dragon lived She approached the dragon and said Hello Mr Dragon can you please help me save my parents The dragon said I will help but you have to fight with me and defeat me Princess Veera accepted the challenge She fought very hard but she couldn't defeat the dragon. But the dragon was impressed by her skills. The dragon said, "Hey brave princess, I am impressed with your skills. So I have decided to help you. Come, sit on my back. I will take you to your kingdom." The dragon 
flew over the mountains. After some time, they reached the kingdom of Shivale. The princess and the dragon entered the palace and went to the king's chamber. While the dragon, with his magical powers, cut open the chains by which the king and queen were tied, Princess Veera fought with Ketu. Then the dragon blew fire from his mouth. The magician got scared and kneeled in front of them. The princess ordered her soldiers to lock up Ketu in a dark cell. Her army attacked Ketu's brother. They defeated him and his army. They captured him and locked him with Ketu. Thus, the brave princess saved her parents and ruled the kingdom of Shivale. All the people of the kingdom were happy and lived a peaceful life ever after. Fisherman and the Mermaid Once upon a time, in a small village, lived a fisherman Raju, along with his wife Tanu. Every morning, Raju would go to the river to catch fish. Raju was poor, but an honest man. His wife Tanu was a greedy woman. She always used to complain about something or the other. Why don't you work hard? I am tired of living in this small hut. I want good food, new clothes, jewelry. Do something about it. As usual, one morning, Raju went to the river to catch fish. He sat there for a long time, but couldn't catch any fish. Now Raju was tired and also worried. What will Tanu say if I don't catch any fish? Suddenly, he felt some pressure on his net. He started pulling his net. It was heavier than usual. Raju pulled it hard and saw there was not a single fish but a mermaid. Raju was surprised. The mermaid said, Oh, please leave me. Raju decided to spare her life by letting her into the water again. Looking at Raju's kindness, the mermaid said, Hey kind man, thank you for saving my life. I am the princess of this river. Tell me, what do you want? And I will fulfill your wish. But as Raju was not greedy, he decided not to take anything from the mermaid. He thanked the mermaid and went home empty-handed. Tanu was waiting at the door. She was angry to see her husband returning home without any fish. She started shouting at Raju. Raju told her about the mermaid. Tanu was very upset as Raju didn't ask anything from the mermaid. She ordered Raju to go back to the river and ask the mermaid to give us a lot of gold coins. Only then I will be happy. Poor Raju went back to the river and called the mermaid. He told the mermaid that his wife wants gold coins. The mermaid said, Your wife's wish is granted. Go home. As he went back home, he saw a pot full of gold coins. 
Raju asked Tanu, Are you happy now? She said, Maybe. Next morning, Tanu ordered him to go back to the mermaid. Tell her, I want a big house where I can keep this gold safe. Raju went back to the river and called the mermaid. Oh Raju, you are back. Is your wife happy with the gold? No, now she wants a big house. Okay Raju, your wife's wish is granted. As Raju went back, he saw that his hut had turned into a big house. He asked Tanu, Are you happy now? She said, Maybe. The next day, Tanu told Raju, Now I am rich. I can't go to the market working. I need a royal horse cart. Rich women don't walk on muddy roads. Go to the mermaid and ask for a royal horse cart. Raju quietly went to the mermaid and asked for the royal horse cart. The mermaid said, Your wife's wish is granted. Go home. When Raju went home, he saw a royal horse cart parked outside his house. A few days later, Tanu said to Raju, Now I have become rich. All our neighbors respect me. And now I want the entire village to respect me. Go to the mermaid and ask her to make me the village head. Then I will be really happy. Poor Raju went back to the mermaid and told her about his wife's wish. The mermaid said, Oh Raju, don't worry. By the time you reach home, your wife will be the village head. As Raju went home, he saw all the villagers had gathered around his house and paying their respects to his wife. Raju asked her, Are you happy now? She said, I can't decide. Raju was surprised to hear this. As the days passed, Tanu kept on asking for something or the other things from the mermaid. The mermaid kept fulfilling Tanu's wishes as Raju had saved her life. One day, it started raining heavily. Raju's big house and horse cart was flooded with rain water. Tanu got very angry. She said, Raju, I want the rain to fall only on my orders. Go to the mermaid immediately and ask her to give me the power by which I can control the rain. Raju said, This is impossible. Nobody can grant you this wish. But Tanu was not ready to listen. Raju had no choice. He went to the mermaid and told her the entire story. The mermaid said, I will certainly fulfill her wish. Go home. Tanu ordered the rain to stop. For the next few days, there was no rain in the village. The crops dried. The lakes and wells were empty. There was no water to drink. The angry villagers went to Raju's house. The angry men were shouting and the women started hitting Tanu. Raju tried to stop the villagers, but in vain. He decided to go back to the mermaid for help. He called the mermaid and said, Please help my wife. Please take her powers back. The mermaid said, 
It was her wish. Sorry, Raju. I won't be able to help her. Raju said, I have always asked you to fulfill my wife's wishes. But now, for the first time, I am requesting you to fulfill my wish. Okay, Raju. I will fulfill your wish. Tell me what do you want? I want you to help my wife. You can take the gold, the big house, the horse cart and the power and everything that you have given us. Just save my wife. As you wish, Raju. Go home and your wife will be safe. Raju went home running. He saw that the villagers had left and his wife was standing outside his old hut waiting for him. Raju hugged his wife. Tanu started crying as she had realized her mistake. Tanu promised that she will never be greedy. It started raining again and all the villagers were very happy. From that day, they lived a happy and peaceful life. Old Lady and the Pumpkin Once upon a time, there was an old lady called Saku. She used to live in a small village. The village was surrounded by forests from all sides. Saku was old but a clever lady. She used to live all alone. She had a daughter who was happily married. She lived in another village across the forest. One day, Saku decided to visit her daughter. She cooked her daughter's favorite food. She took the food in a basket and started her journey. She was traveling all alone through the forest. The forest was dense and full of wild animals. After walking for a while, she was tired. So she decided to take some rest under a big tree. After resting for a while, she felt hungry and decided to eat some food. She opened her tiffin and started eating. Suddenly, she heard some noise in the bushes. When she turned her head, she saw a big bad wolf coming towards her. She was really scared to see the wolf. But she decided to be brave. What do you want? I am hungry and so I am going to eat you. Saku was very clever. She said, If you want to eat me, go ahead. I am a weak and a sick old woman. I will not be able to fight you. But if you eat me now, what you will get is just bones and no flesh at all. I am going to my daughter's house. I will stay there for a few days, eat healthy food, become strong and then you can eat me. The wolf thought for a while and said, Do you promise to come back? Saku said, you can trust me. The wolf decided to let her go. Saku resumed her journey. As she walked further, she met a tiger. The tiger thought, Oh, what a treat! I guess today is my lucky day. I am going to eat a human after such a long time. Hey old lady, say your last prayers as I am going to eat you now. Saku decided to fool the tiger 
as she had fooled the wolf. Oh mighty tiger, if you want to eat me, go ahead. I am just a weak old lady. I will not be able to stop you. But I would like to say something before you eat me. Whatever you want to say, say it fast. I am very hungry. Look at me. I am so thin and weak. I can barely stand. If you eat me now, you will only get bones in your mouth. I am going to my daughter's place. I will stay there for a few days, eat healthy food, become strong and then you can eat me. You think I'm stupid to let my lunch walk away? Okay. If you want to eat only bones, come and eat me. The tiger thought for a while and said, "Do you promise to come back? You can trust me." The tiger decided to let her go. Sakhu resumed her journey. As she walked further, she met a lion. The lion was happy to see the old woman. He thought, "Finally, I am going to eat a human after a long time. Today is a great day." Hey old lady, say your last prayers as I am going to eat you now. Sakhu decided to fool the lion as she had fooled the wolf and the tiger hey king of the jungle if you want to eat me go ahead i am a weak old lady i will not be able to stop you but i would like to say something before you eat me shut up i don't want to listen to you I am very hungry and I am going to eat you. Look at me. I am so thin and weak. I can barely stand. If you eat me now, you will only get bones in your mouth. I am going to my daughter's place. I will stay there for a few days. Eat healthy food, become strong. and then you can eat me you think i am stupid to let you walk away okay if you want to eat only bones come and eat me the lion thought for a while and said do you promise to come back sakhu said you can trust me the lion decided to let her go the woman thanked god and walked towards her daughter's house after walking for a while she reached her daughter's house her daughter was very happy to see her sakhu gave her the food which she had made for her after they finished their food sakhu narrated her encounters with the wicked wolf tiger and lion to her daughter the daughter said thank god that you are safe you can stay here for a few days with me the old woman spent a few days at her daughter's place she ate delicious food every day and was very happy she also gained some weight after a few days sakhu decided to go back home She said to her daughter, "I had a good time here, but now I must return home." But she was really scared about the wolf, tiger, and the lion. Her daughter was also very clever, just like her mother. "Don't worry, mother. I will find some way out." She took a huge pumpkin from her garden. Then She emptied the entire pumpkin from inside and told her mother she should sit inside the pumpkin while going back. She told her 
If you meet any of the animals on the way, just say, I don't know any old lady. Walk my pumpkin, tun tun tun. Saku said goodbye to her daughter. She sat inside the pumpkin and started her journey through the forest. A little further, she met the lion. Hey pumpkin, have you seen an old lady? She was supposed to come back in a few days. The pumpkin replied, I don't know any old lady. Walk my pumpkin, tun tun tun. The lion was confused and let the pumpkin go. Saku resumed her journey. A little ahead, she met the tiger. He was surprised to see the pumpkin walking. Hey pumpkin, I am waiting for an old lady. Have you seen her? The pumpkin replied, I don't know any old lady. Walk my pumpkin, tun tun tun. The tiger believed her and let the pumpkin walk away. On the way, she met the wolf. The wolf asked, Hey pumpkin, have you seen an old lady? She was supposed to come back in a few days. The pumpkin replied, I don't know any old lady. Walk my pumpkin, tun tun tun. The wolf let the pumpkin go. She had fooled the wolf, tiger and the lion. After travelling for some more time, she reached her home safely. Her clever daughter's idea saved her life. She lived a happy life thereafter. Alibaba and 40 Thieves Once upon a time, there were two brothers named Alibaba and Kasim. The elder brother Kasim was a greedy man. After their father's death, Kasim asked Alibaba to leave the family house. Poor Alibaba became a woodcutter to support his family. Every day, he would go to the forest to cut the trees. One day, as usual, he was cutting logs in the forest. He saw a group of horsemen coming towards him. From their appearance, he could make out that they were thieves. Alibaba climbed over a tree to hide from them. They stopped under the tree where Alibaba was hiding. There was a big rock opposite that tree. Just out of curiosity, Alibaba counted those thieves. There were 40 of them. They were carrying heavy sacks on their back. The leader of the thieves went near the big rock and said, Open, O Sim Sim, open. As soon as he said those words, the big rock moved. Alibaba couldn't believe his eyes. The rock was a door to a dark cave. All the thieves entered the cave. The rock moved again and closed the cave. Alibaba was amused. After a while, the rock moved again and all the thieves came out empty-handed. They had left their sacks inside the cave. This time, the leader said, Close, O Sim Sim, close! The big rock door closed again. The thieves climbed on their horses and went away. Alibaba climbed down the tree and went near the rock. He said, Open, O Sim Sim, open! The door opened and Alibaba entered the cave. 
He was surprised to see what was inside the cave. He couldn't believe his eyes. There were piles of gold coins, pots full of diamonds, precious stones, and beautiful jewelry. There is so much. If I take some, the thieves won't even notice it. He picked up an empty sack and gathered whatever he could. He came out of the cave and said the magic words. Close or sim sim close to close the rock. He sat on his donkey and went home with a bag full of treasure. He showed it to his wife. His wife was surprised. What is this? Where did you get it from? Did you rob someone? Ali Baba told her everything. Okay, but let's count it. Ali Baba said it's difficult to count so many coins. Go to my brother's place and ask him for a weighing scale. His wife went to Kasim and asked him for a weighing scale. Why do you need the weighing scale? I want to weigh some rice. Kasim was a cunning man. He applied a little glue on the bottom of the scale and gave it to Ali Baba's wife. Ali Baba and his wife weighed the gold coins. Both of them were happy. Now they had become rich. Ali Baba said, "Don't get excited. We can't let people know about it. Please keep it a secret." Next day, Ali Baba's wife returned the weighing scale. Kasim found a gold coin which was stuck at the bottom of it. He was shocked. He called his wife and told her, "Go find out. How did my poor brother get gold coins?" She immediately went to Ali Baba's house. She showed them the weighing scale and asked them, "From where did you get the gold coin?" Tell me the truth or else I will have you both arrested. The poor husband and wife had to tell her everything. She ran back and told everything to Kasim. Kasim went to Ali Baba's house and said, "Take me to the cave." Ali Baba had no choice. He told him about the cave and the magic words. Next morning, Kasim sat on his donkey and went near the cave. Six donkeys were following him on which he had planned to keep the treasure. Kasim said the magic words. Open or sim sim open. The door opened. Kasim went inside and the door closed behind him. He was surprised to see the treasure. Now all this is going to be mine. I am going to be a rich man. He gathered all he could. He dragged all the sacks to the door, but unfortunately, he forgot the magic words which would open the door. He tried many combinations of words, but in vain. He suddenly heard horses approaching. He was scared. As the thieves reached near the cave, they saw Kasim's donkeys. They got suspicious. They entered the cave and saw Kasim. The leader killed Kasim with a sword. Oh, so he was the fool who was stealing our treasure? When Kasim didn't return home at night, his wife went to Ali Baba to inquire about him. He must have gone to the cave. Don't worry. I will go and look for him. He went to the cave. and saw his brother's donkeys open no sim sim open he went inside the cave and saw that someone had killed his brother 
he carried his brother on his back and went home. Kasim's wife started crying. Ali Baba, his wife, and Kasim's wife buried Kasim's body behind their house. The next day, when the thieves returned to their cave, they found Kasim's body missing. They came to know that someone else was also aware about their treasure. The leader said, "We must find out who else knows about this place." Go to the village, visit each and every house, and find out who died recently. The thieves visited every house in the village. One of the thief visited Kasim's house. He found out that Kasim had died recently. The thief asked one of the villager if Kasim had any close family. The villager said he has a younger brother. named ali baba and he became rich overnight he came to know that ali baba was the man they were looking for he went back to the leader and told him everything they decided to teach ali baba a lesson the leader dressed as an oil merchant and went to the village he bought 40 donkeys and 40 barrels He filled one barrel with oil. He asked his men to hide inside the remaining barrels. At night, all of them went to Ali Baba's house. The leader knocked at the door. I am an oil merchant. I am traveling to another city. But it's too late. I am looking for a place to spend the night. Ali Baba welcomed him, but his wife did not trust that man. She asked him to show the oil, but Ali Baba asked her to remain quiet. He told the leader to keep the oil barrels in the backyard. He offered him food and a place to sleep. Ali Baba's wife was passing by the backyard. She heard some noises from the barrels. She heard someone saying, "Is it the time to attack?" She was a sharp-minded woman. She counted the barrels. They were 40. She realized that only one barrel contains oil. and the thieves are hiding in the rest of the barrels the one who pretends to be the oil merchant must be their leader she immediately went to the kitchen and boiled lots of oil then she went to the backyard and poured the boiling oil in each and every barrel at midnight their leader came to the backyard and said You all can come out now. But there was no response. He opened one of the barrel and found his man dead. He opened all the barrels one by one. He saw all his men were dead. He was afraid. He ran away from there. Next morning, Ali Baba's wife told him about everything. Ali Baba and his wife threw all the barrels in the well. Ali Baba and his family lived a happy and rich life. The magic pot. Once upon a time, there was a farmer named Ram. He was a honest and hard-working man. One day he was plowing his field. Suddenly his plow hit something in the ground. It sounded like metal. So he took his spade and started digging. After digging for some time, he found a huge metal pot. The farmer pulled out the pot. He thought, what is the use of this big empty pot? 
I will go to the market tomorrow and sell it. I hope it will give a good price. By the time sun came up, it was lunch time. He kept his spade inside the pot and sat under a tree to have lunch. After a while, he decided to resume his work. When he went to take his spade from the pot, he noticed that there were many spades just like the one he had. He was confused. Now which one belongs to me? He took out all the spades and counted. There were hundred spades. He was surprised. Is this a magic pot? He decided to take a test. He picked a pebble and put it in the pot. Soon, the pot was full of pebbles. He counted them. There were hundred pebbles. Now he realized that whatever he puts into that pot, the pot gives it back hundred times more. He was very happy on this discovery. He had an apple with him. He put it in the pot and got hundred apples. He took the pot inside his house. He told his wife about the magic pot. She didn't believe it. He asked her to put one of her bangle inside the pot. She couldn't believe her eyes. The pot gave back hundred bangles. His wife was very happy. She told Ram to keep the pot somewhere safe so that nobody will know about it. Now what will I do with so many bangles? We can sell them. The next day they went to the market. They sold the spades, apples and the bangles. They made good money. On the way back home, they bought some groceries and some vegetables. At night, they put groceries and vegetables in the pot. The pot gave them back in hundreds. Next day, they again went to the market, sold the groceries and vegetables. This went on for a few days. They became rich. They built a big house. Their neighbors were suspicious. They started whispering amongst them. How did Ram suddenly become so rich? I think he must have found some treasure. They decided to keep an eye on him. They started following him everywhere. But they couldn't find anything. One day, one of the neighbor peeped inside through Ram's window. He saw Ram putting cloth inside the pot and getting back hundred times more. He was jealous. He decided to steal that pot and become rich. When Ram and his wife left for the market, he broke into their house and stole the pot. When Ram and his wife came back, they found their house open. When they went inside, they found out that their magic pot was stolen. Ram's wife was very disappointed. But Ram said, We have enough to survive. We also have our own farm. We will work hard and grow crops. As it is, the pot was making us lazy. She agreed. The jealous neighbor wanted to see how the magic works. So he put his head inside the pot. And now he had hundred heads. He was scared. He didn't know how to reverse it. He went running to Ram and asked him how to reverse the magic. I don't know how to reverse the magic. But this magic pot is certainly very dangerous. He took the pot from his neighbor and buried it deep inside the ground. Now the greedy neighbor had to live with hundred heads throughout his life. Hi, I'm sure you enjoyed watching this video. Please click on the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel and watch more interesting videos.